Hey, what's up, guys? Andy here with Pittsburgh Weiss Schwartz, and you asked for it. And today we are bringing you Fate Grand Order Camelot, the new additional set for Fate Grand Order. Well, I guess it's not that new. It's been out for a little while now, but um, yeah. Anyway, finally got around to getting some deck techs out for this. It's been kind of busy, um, and I know people have been wanting something a little bit different than the door choice list that uh, a lot of people uh, are running. Uh, my list isn't too different from that, <laughs> but don't worry, we will have some additional Fate Grand Order deck decks coming out in the future um, shortly that we'll be going over like some of the other archetypes in the set, like uh, Gold Bar arc the, the Gold Bar deck with Ozymanthus and like some of the MASH stuff, so definitely stay tuned for that. But yeah, I'm joined uh, today with Carmen, as usual. What's up, what's up? And uh, let's just go on to the next slide here and look at the deck list. Uh, kind of similar to a lot of the other fake grand order lists you might have seen with one notable big difference um and that being that i'm running the standby climaxes instead of the choice climaxes that go with the lion king um i, I just think overall it's just a much uh, a much better fit in the deck i'd rather have a better chance of getting the bed of your finisher off uh, than praying for the miracle that my opponent can't answer uh, the Lion King with anti-change or Nadachi or something. Uh, not to mention that getting multiple turns of Lion King combo back to back, starting at level 2, didn't really seem that feasible to me, as the set doesn't really have the greatest tools for climax fixing, outside of climax swap. But since we aren't playing gold bar or pants, you know, it's tough to get climaxes in our hand in the first place to even start swapping around. So uh, this just seemed like a more consistent build to me. Um, and there's some nice synergy too, being able to like stand by out an additional Lion King for or a Bedivere for stronger finisher turns. So um, something I've really enjoyed playing with, and uh, done a lot of refining with this deck list, and I've got to a pretty good spot now, I think. Um, but yeah, let's just get into it. Uh, level zeros, we got 16 of them. Um, four copies of the Loyal Knight Bedivere. He is a mill runner. Uh, he also looks at the top card of your deck when you play him, and can move it to your waiting room if you want. So good way to help set up for a Lion King burn, since Lion King, when you attack with it. Uh, you reveal your top card and burn your opponent equal to the level of the card. So, you, if you see a high level card on top with him, you just leave it on top and burn with the Lion King. Or, if it's a low level card, you can move it to have another chance to get something better with Lion King. And he's just probably the best or in contention for the best plusing level zero in the set, uh, just as a basic mill runner. And then four copies of the Hassan Rize. Uh, this is like the other starter that you're looking for. It doesn't plus in the same way that Bedivere does, but it does sculpt you, uh, helping you get into your level one combo. Uh, so you can get a three level one combo turn. Um, or um, helps you get into whichever part of the combo pieces you need to have in hand because the Lion King's like a three-piece combo that you need. Uh, and it gives minus a thousand power somewhere when you play it. So uh, with more and more decks running uh, overloaded cards at level zero, uh, things that are 500 or a thousand power or less, um, you can just outright kill them so they don't get their on reverse effects. Um, a lot of stuff that'll like go to memory on reverse or like something like Wildberry Princess in Adventure Time that you need to kill it for them to get the search off. In, if you kill it outside of combat with the minus thousand and don't reverse it, they don't get that effect. And throughout the game, you can just use this as a way to, in the same way you would use a power pump, just to shrink your opponent's lane and then hit over it. All in all, a, pr a pretty well-rounded card that's overperformed for me in the games one, every game I've seen it. Moving on, we got three copies of the Aggravant Brainstormer, and two copies of the Bonder to the Holy Selection Ritual event. Uh, the Brainstormer is just pretty much a basic uh, waiting room salvage brainstorm. Uh, his other effect says when you play him or any of your other Night of the Round characters, so that's any of your yellow cards, um, you get a look at the top card of your deck. You don't get to move it like you do with the runner, but uh, just, again, having that knowledge um, about what's on top of your deck for your Lion King to burn is very helpful throughout the game. Uh, and since when you play Lion King down himself, he is a Night of the Round, he gets to check, so... All throughout the game, it's a pretty handy effect. Uh, and his third effect is whenever you put a marker under him, which you're only really doing with the event card, um, it immediately goes to waiting room. So if you're trying to loop event cards um, um, using the events and then this next card, which bonds to the event, um, you would want to be throwing the event under the Aggravan Brainstormer. So it would immediately go to your graveyard for you to pick back up with the bonder. Moving on to the next slide, we got... 
two copies of the Drop Searcher here and one copy of the Climax Swap. Uh, Climax Swap is a pretty generic tool. Uh, as I said earlier, we don't really have access to getting a lot of Climaxes in our hand to you know switch around, but um, when we're clock drawing, you know, we will eventually draw into the uh, Climax that we don't want, and this is a, just a good uh, tool to have to be able to search up to be able to uh, switch our Climaxes to our preference. Uh, the Drop Searcher is a bit more interesting though here. Uh, on play, you can return up to two characters from a waiting room, to, or return two characters from a waiting room to deck and shuffle, uh, and then you can side attack for free. And since this is a drop searcher, this essentially lets us hit both zones with the search effect. So we can either just use the drop search effect like normal and search our deck for something in there, or if the card that we want is in our waiting room, uh, we can shuffle that card back into our deck and then search our deck. So you have access to pretty much any card in any zone with this, which is very nice. Um, another really cool play you can do with it is if you're if you have a small amount of cards in deck, or just at any point when you want to increase the odds for your Lion King to hit uh, high-costed cards for his burn effect. You can shuffle your high cost of cards back with this. Um, really cool play if you have only one card left in your deck. You can shuffle two higher level cards back into your deck with this and then use the drop search effect to grab whichever card you didn't shuffle back in so then you know your deck's exactly two level threes that will be big burns so you know just attack with two lion kings um drop searches and drop salvages are just good tools to have in general and that extra bit of utility being able to like stack your burn effects is really really cool um and makes the card worthy of being a two of and then yep that's it for level zero 16 of them and then moving on to level one here, we have four copies of the Agri or the Bedivere combo at level one. Um, probably the best generic uh, plus in combo this set has access to. It is off this door climax. He sits at 5,000 power if you have two or more other Shouty or Camelot characters, so pretty much all the time. And when you attack with it with the combo, you get to mill two cards from the top of your deck and salvage a level X or lower character. X is the combined level of the cards you milled. So basic cigarettes combo that gets an extra 2,000 power when you attack with it. So with the climax down, he's swinging for 8k, which is definitely overstatted for a level 1 combo. So even if your opponent's playing standby, uh, you still might be able to clear their board with this, which is kind of nice. Uh, and the fact that it is an on attack combo, um, again, is also nice. Even if you can't get over your opponent's big stuff or if they have like something that's popping back to hand when you attack it um it's just a guaranteed combo to go off which is something the deck really appreciates and then only got eight level ones total here uh the other four we have here are one copy of the adachi uh it has a second effect on it where you can like discard a, an extra copy of the uh, event bonder from your hand to kill one of their level two or lower cards um this rarely comes up in my experience especially since i'm running kind of low counts of both but it is an important play to keep in mind. It is a line of text on the card that could come up. Uh, but it's mostly there just for being an Adachi, which is something that pretty much every deck wants to have nowadays. Uh, one copy of a 2k counter, um, and two copies of the Holy Selection event card. Uh, and how this works is you need a character with Lion King in its name to be able to play it. So that's not all of your cards, um, but it hits off of your key ones that you will usually have on the field. So... Specifically, it, your Brainstormer has Lion King in name, so you can use this with your Brainstormer on the field. Um, and you get to look at the top four cards of your deck or a character and add it to your hand. Um, but instead of going to Waiting Room, you can put this card underneath one of your Knight of the Round Tables as a marker and give the character you put this under a thousand power for the turn. Um, so you can get a little bit of extra power on stuff. Again, again, it's important to note that only the yellow characters in the deck are Knight of the Round trait, so you can't throw this under everything. You can't throw it under your level 1 combo, for example, which is kind of annoying, but you can throw it under Lion King, um, and even if you're not getting benefit off the 1,000 power, you can still just throw it under any of your yellow cards just to get a free piece of compression that you otherwise wouldn't with this type of camera profile, so... What I find myself doing a lot is, you know, if I don't have a big Lion King to throw it under, I'll throw it under the 2-1 assist in my back row. Uh, and it will just chill there as a free marker, which is free point of compression, which is nice. And it's pulling a smaller level car card out of your deck in that sense, so you're more likely to hit your big burns with the uh, Lion King effect. Um, I guess one deck building choice here, if... Um, if you wanted a third copy of the event card so you could see it more frequently with the bonder, you could turn this 2k counter into another uh, holy selection event, but I value having the 2k counter in the toolbox as like something to be able to grab uh, off of our salvage effect at level 1. So 
that's why I went with the choice I did there. But you, you could really split those however you want. On to level twos here. I have three copies of the Lion King back row assist. Uh, it's 2,000 power assist to all your level threes in front of it. Uh, and you can pay two and rest this card and the Agravin Brainstorm to put the level three Lion King from your hand directly into play. It's very much the same style that uh, pretty much all the Hollow Live decks use, where they rest their two back row cards and then cheat the card in from their hand. It's the same style as that. Um, and this Lion King works well with the, the level three version because uh, the 2000 power assist helps it sit at base 13,000 power, which is pretty sizable. Uh, you also have a second effect with it where you can pay one and rest this and another character. So similar cost to the first effect, uh, and you can salvage one of those holy selection events from your waiting room. You're not going to be doing that effect a lot. You're mostly going to be using the effect to uh, put an early Lion King into play, but depending on how your game is shaping up or what you need at any given point in time, you can use that second effect to grab a holy selection event, which is a, a nice bit of utility to have just stapled to the card for free. Um, and then two copies of this Bedivere Kome. This is a level two Kome, so when you when you play it from your hand, you get to look at up to four cards from the top of your deck, take any climax from among them to your hand, and then discard a card. Not a particularly good effect to have on a level two, but had to make the deck building concession here because like I mentioned earlier, uh, Camelot does not really have any way whatsoever to fix climaxes outside of like a climax swap. The deck has no access to any sort of top check X effects of like any kind. So actually drawing into your climax on your kill turn, uh, like when you're trying to set that up, you know, it's nice to have something else to fall back on other than just block drawing and crossing your fingers. So having another way to get into your climax is very nice. Um, and despite this card being a level two, which is again, not the greatest uh, time to be playing a Kome. It almost works in this card's favor because this is just a higher level card in our deck for the Lion King to hit. So it doesn't feel as bad as it would in other decks. Um, so I haven't really seen a lot of people run this card, but it feels like a necessary evil to me and it's actually worked out pretty well in practice. So I'd recommend giving it a shot um, in any build of Fate Camelot you're playing. And then rounding out level twos, two copies of big counters. Uh, one is a 3,500 counter and the other is a 3k counter that mills your opponent, equal to the number of characters you have. Um, I tend to like having more copies of the mill counter. That's what I was on originally, but um, I ended up adding a, adding a yellow level two counter just to like help with some color fixing early on so I could play my events more consistently. But, and I, and I know there's other options for level two counters in Camelot as well. I know there's like an anti-change counter as well. So you can kind of mix and match them however you like, but this is the split that I am on. Uh, talking about some of the early plays here, getting into level threes. Uh, two copies of the Blessed Rampage Morgan, Mordred. Um, this card can early play if your opponent has a level three card on their field. Um, so if your opponent hits level two first and starts getting their early plays down or is playing a standby deck, uh, this card comes down and smacks it for a lot of power because if you have the back row to go with it, this thing sits at 15k power. So definitely going to be bigger than most of your opponent's early plays. And it heals on play. So uh, as long as you're playing against a typical deck that is playing early plays or standby, this should be a pretty free condition to hit. Uh, but do keep in mind that some games you might not be able to play if your opponent does not play a level 3 early. Um, but since it heals on play, as does this Bedivere next to it, which is a heal to stock early play with a more conventional condition, you, you can get some healing in the mid game if you want it, even though we're not running the Lion King combo. Next here we got the Lion King herself. Uh, again, you early play this down to the field by uh, resting the two specific back row cards picture next to it uh, and paying two stock, and you can put this card into play at level two. Uh, and when you attack with this, if um, you, you reveal top card of your deck and you burn your opponent equal to the level of the card you reveal. Um, like I said before, you use this uh, the, the Brainstormer's effect to just be able to look at the top card whenever you play Night of the Round feeds right into this, um, allowing you to look at the top card of your deck when you play the Lion King to see if it is a high level card that will give you a good burn effect. Um, if it is, then you can just go right to attacking and get a guaranteed burn damage. Uh, otherwise, you can try to attack with something else first just to get that lower level card out of the way. Or if you have effects that will let you um, go through the top card of your deck, like for example, the Holy Selection event or the level zero uh, Bedivere Mill Runner, which uh, move the top card when you play it. You can kind of like re-rack the top of your deck and give yourself another chance to burn with this. Uh, it also does have a climax combo that I'm not playing. Um, 
Yeah, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, I don't think it's wise to play into the heal effect that strongly. I feel like, at least in my experience, they just will kill the Lion King. And if you're trying to get multiples of them on the field and just heal loop every turn, you just don't have the means to protect the Lion King enough to make that worthwhile, I don't think. Because uh, there's you have zero answer to an opponent's Adachi killing this early. Um, and you just don't really have ways to continuously get the choice combo into your hand to keep looping this. Um, but if it is something you wanted to run, you could definitely run um, as many copies of the Choice Climax as you want uh, and just switch into them with Climax swaps. That's something you definitely can do. It's just not as consistent as you might like it to be. And then going on to the last card here, uh, and one of the main reasons standby Climaxes are in the deck in the first place is this Bedivere, which combos off of the same level 1 combo, um, it, you're off your same level 1 Climax. Um, when it's in your center stage, all of your characters, including himself, get 1,500 extra power. So it's something good to stand by out to your field early. If you have um, a Lion King on the field, you like swing with Lion King. Um, and then if you ever trigger a standby on your turn, you can play this better for your, from your waiting room over one of your front row cards, which will make your Lion King even stronger, uh, which actually gives it a more reasonable chance of realistically living back to your turn. Um, and then it gives you access to a lot of reach at the end of the game with the combo. And as a, cli again, climax combo off the door, at the end of this card's attack, you can pay for it and discard two cards to deal three damage to your opponent twice. Um, this is a very steep cost on this sort of card. Um, costs a lot of hand and a lot of stock, um, but being able to stand by one of these out early dramatically reduces that cost. Um, and it's actually very feasible to be able to double these if you're managing your stock properly throughout the game. Um, you kind of have to think if you want to play your Lion Kings early some games if you're trying to go for like double of this. But uh, just keep your stock thresholds in mind and it's definitely like a, a powerful tool to have. Because if, if your Lion King lives from the turn before and you can like untap with it and swing again, get another burn with it, and then start throwing these climax combos on top of it, you end up with a lot of killing power at the top end. And you can do this more effectively than the door choice builds of the deck would be able to um and that's that's it that's the that's the deck list have it all laid out here again at the end for you um any additional thoughts carmen before i go to the uh i have one more slide at the end with some tech options you could choose to run as well but this is just the uh the main list here no not really i think uh think you made a good case for why why you would want to play standby it just lowers the stock thresholds like if you can hit a standby anywhere between like one and two it helps you out no matter what like you hit it at one you get your two one down early you don't have to worry about paying or sculpting for that of your combos and then if you hit one when you're at two you get a better view and you get a bigger reach at the end so no, no matter where you hit the standby even though you're only playing four you get something out of it i think personally i'd probably like shift towards playing more event like somehow i'll probably like just edit the ratios a little bit just to jam four event in there just because i love that profile but that's just yeah the me. event ponder is really sweet like i mentioned uh earlier in the video if you want to uh get that third and fourth copy of the event into the deck i know that is one of the big cool cards that you know draws people to fate camelot in the first place is that event package um you can easily just turn the level one back up and do another copy of the event um, and you could probably, if you wanted to fit a fourth copy in, I'd probably cut one of the, uh, 2-1 Bedivere Climax. Yeah, um, that, that was gonna be my, my knee jerk. Sure. Something there, yeah. I really like the, um, my only other comment is I really like that Mordred early play. Every time, I, I don't have Fake Camelot, but every time someone slams that card down against me, I'm like, damn, they healed, and this card's like 16-5 cross turn, and I'll never get rid of it. Like, yeah, massive it, it's, card. Yeah, it's a really solid early play, um, but again, when you're playing it, remember oh, that... Oh, it's during um, your turn. Yeah, it always clears lane, yeah. Yeah, you, you need to have, you can early play it if your opponent has a level 3 on field, but it only gets the extra 4,000 power if you have the 2-1 Lion King assist on the field. You need that named card on the field. Yeah, but still, so, like, 15, 15 on on turn, like, 11 off is, like, really good. Pretty That's solid like, it's on, pre like pretty, pretty obnoxious. Free early condition, yeah. Pretty obnoxious to deal with. But, all right, yeah, we can hop to your, your extra yeah. cards here, because I was going to mention one this slide. one. Hmm? I was going to mention this first one here, the replica, as, like, an alternative to uh, the 2-1, if you didn't want to try that card. There's always this. You could, like, split it. 
And that's what yeah, that... it, does, it does give you some uh, an extra way to try to get into a door climax. Um, it's one zero Bedivere potential option you could run uh, going into your uh, well. I guess any time during your turn you can pay two, clock yourself, and then take the door climax from your waiting room and put it into your climax zone. So for two stock and clocking yourself, you can essentially Ricky a climax to your field, which sets up perfectly for either of your level one or level three combos. Um, I'm personally not running the card. I, I think that cost is a little bit too steep to make me. Yeah, it's a little rough. Play it. I, I don't like. If it were either just pay two or clock yourself, you know, I, I think I'd be more on board with it. But the deck already has. It's very top heavy in the sense that you don't really have a ton of ways to generate stock other than just swinging a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. um, and once you get to level two and want to start early playing your Lion Kings, your stock just disappears. Um, and then. You either have to, like, ride those Lion Kings all the way to the end of the game, or you just need to be, like, super stock light the rest of the game if you want to have any sort of chance to be able to do a finisher combo at the top. Um, so, overall, I think the cost is a little too steep on the Bedivere, but I have seen other people play it, and it is definitely a viable card to run. Just uh, Since I was going more uh, linear and more straightforward onto the uh, Bedivere finisher, uh, I didn't think I had the stock for that, but that's definitely a very good option that can be teched into the deck. Um, we already talked about the Choice Climax. You know, you can run, take any number of the standby Climaxes out uh, for that Choice Climax if you want to give yourself the ability to loop Lion Kings, if you want to add that uh, possibility into the deck. Uh, and again, if you do that, I would probably recommend adding some more Climax Swappers into the deck as well. Um, and last card here is the 3-2 Lancelot. Um, if you like the concept of running Door Stamp, by um, and actually want to get the card into the deck that combos with the standby, you could throw this guy in there at level 3 as well. Um, one of the beefier cards you could hit as just a if you like just trigger into standby or whatever um, and it does allow you to use that standby climax to give yourself some extra reach at the end of the game as like a, a climax combo if you if you don't have the door to combo with but uh, that's it guys, thanks for watching here's the slide we put at the end of all of our videos and like I mentioned at the start we will be putting out some more Fate Grand Order content here for uh, covering some of the other archetypes the set has, specifically uh, eight bar, eight choice, and some sort of mash deck. So stay tuned for that multi deck deck. And uh, with that, uh, I got nothing else to say. Pittsburgh White Shorts signing off. We will see you in the next one. See ya.